This is Mel, and I'm back to talk about the 100, episode 511, titled The Dark Year, which premiered Tuesday, July 24, 2018 on the CW. I'm recording the next day, July 25th. Um, so huge spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, and then come back and see what I have to say about the episode. Otherwise, my other video reminders are up on screen. Take a moment to remind yourselves of those. So I'm going to start with a 15-minute clock, and let's begin with what happened in this episode. So timeline-wise, um, it continues straight from um, 510. Um, but the episode does span over um, the six-day march um, from Polis to um, Shallow Valley. Um, as the end of 510 not only has Clark finding her mother unconscious, but also shows Wong crew leaving Polis for their, for their march. So there's that. Episode reminder is the, I guess I will say, is we got to see the flashbacks to what has been referenced as the Dark Year within the bunker. And the Dark Year took place two years into... Um, their underground um, confinement. Um, so there's that. So storyline-wise, though, I really only picked up on two distinct ones. First one being saving Abby from her addiction, and the second one being preparing for war. So with the first storyline, um, this is uh, the portion of the episode where we find out what happened in the dark year um, through um, Abby's recollection, and we see it as flashback. So Clark learns about the dark year, which is when it was one year that Wong crew had to... Um, take on uh, being cannibals in order for them to survive this fungus infestation that happened to the portion of their um, food supply that dealt with protein. Um, from that, also, Abby admits to Clark that she started her uh, pill addiction shortly after her ordeal with Allie. Um, while the ice bath um, that we've seen Raven do, um, it helped Abby maintain her mind but the pills we needed for the other side effects that happened with that EMP um, hit to her brain. So there's that. The second storyline, though, was preparing for war. So Space Crew, and that is um, Echo, Amori, Raven, Murphy. Um, it was, I, I believe this is the first episode where the, the term Space Crew was first used. Um, but anyway, Space Crew tries to find a way for Wong Crew to safely evade Shallow Valley um, since... Uh, they find out that McCreary knows about Wong Crew already marching, and they realize that it's because Clark is helping him because she tells him about the the 24-hour loop in the uh, Allegis Eye um, security, um, not realizing that Clark only told him so that she could live long enough to save her mom and to save Maddie. Um, so anyways, because of this, McCreary is using... Um, the playbook he found that Dioza left behind to prepare for this war. Um, so Sp Echo and the rest of the space crew have to try to find a way to infiltrate that plan and warn Bellamy and the others in time as they march. Because for the people marching, they really cannot go back and they don't have enough rations to go back to begin with. So there's that. Last moments of the episode do show Kane and Dioza um, surrendering to Mercury and conspiring with him against Wan Crew, um, with Kane ending on the fact that he will not let the devil into the into the garden type thing. The devil being Octavia, I'm guessing. So there's that. Tidbits though, there's a whole bunch of tidbits in this episode. So first one, um, Abby is forced to uh, to cure the Allegis prisoners or to temporarily cure them of their breathing um, Ill issue thing that they've been coughing up a lung over, um, and that's after she had to. Um, undergo a very rapid detoxing. Uh, second tidbit was that Maddie has acquired Lex's memories. Um, we know this because she references the events of Mount Weather, which is a story that Clark has never told Maddie before. So um, that's brought up. We also get Bellamy kind of disowning Octavia after getting her to agree to surrender for peace once they reach the valley and to allow her to share the valley with Allegis. Um, and disowning because um, Bellamy says that um, he's only fighting to get back to his family. He's not fighting alongside for Octavia. So there's kind of that distinction there. Also, we get Bellamy telling Monty of the 80 acres he got for Space Crew once they get their peace in the valley, kind of making some future plans and stuff. Um, also, in this episode, we see Bellamy speaking fluently in um, in um, Trigus the slang or the grounders language. I do not know how to present it. It's up on screen. And, and he speaks this to echo over the radio so that if anyone from Legis is listening, they don't know what's going on. But when Bellamy speaks it, um, 
Harper and Monty are with him and they understand it perfectly well. Also, same with Raven when she's with Echo in the cave. So I'm assuming that during the six years up in space, Echo and Amori must have taught the original um, uh, 100 um, how to speak it. So that's pretty cool there. Um, also, the last tip is that Deoza already knows that Wanku will win the valley after high casualties are taken on both sides in this war. The state of the valley after this war, though, is what is undetermined. That is the one thing she could not predict um, about the whole thing because she plans for everything, she says. So there's that. So ship status, let's move on to that. Bellamy and Octavia, we do get the tensions between them. We have Octavia saying that um, it's always going to be uh, the two of them fighting alongside each other while Bellamy disagrees and says that he's fighting for his family now and it's not including Octavia. So um, they definitely have huge tensions there. Um, also, we have developments with Raven and Shaw um, in the form of the fact that um, they're, what, less than 24 hours before the war is supposed to start and she makes the first move and kisses him and pretty much tells him that she's mad at him for making him care for making her care for him and then he returns the, the kisses back to her so um it's kind of like a if they both die type thing at least they've gotten that off their chest type of thing i hope they don't die they deserve to explore this dynamic between the two of them so there's that also we got a bit of um teamwork between murphy and echo they got each other's backs and i'm loving it um so there's that also we see a bit of ribbing between murphy and raven they got their banter going about each other's egos happening so there's that um and then also with clark and maddie um we see some arguments about which side of the war they should be on maddie doesn't believe they should be working with mccurry um they should be helping Wong crew yet clark is the only that they're working with mccurry because that's a way for them to survive um, so there's arguments there there's um um defense about uh, past actions um shame is being thrown around so there's a huge a uh, lot of emotion going on between um uh, Clark and Madden. So there's that. So moving on to the most shocking moment of the episode, I think I'd have to be uh, the realization that um, the Dark Gear was referencing Wong Cru's uh, um, dive into cannibalism. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting uh, something of a repeat of the culling um, to have happened or the uh, yeah, something like that. Cause I knew, but I guess that would kind of exp- I don't know because like I didn't expect Expect it to be this dark when it came to the dark year. I thought it was more like a lot of blood on their hands and stuff like that. But I guess essentially it was because they were those who died in the arena were what were the people they were eating in order to survive. So it really takes the model of um, it really took the model they always had before they ate. What was it? Let me find it. Uh. All of him for all of us. Pretty sure that's what they've been speaking this whole time, every time they, before they take their rations and stuff, right? Um, so it was very interesting. It's also very interesting to see just how it came to be for them and their reactions to the idea of cannibalism. Um, Abby was the first one to su- suggest that it's the only way. Cain refuses until his choice was taken away. And only his choice was taken away because Abby told Octavia that she had to force his hand to do it. So it was very interesting to see how, how it all happened. And it, and it does shed some light as to how traumatized Wong Kru is after especially what happened with the Dark Year. Um, but yeah, that was a surprise for me there. Uh, but moving on to top three favorite moments. Uh, first one I loved was Echo taking charge in this episode. Uh, she was dishing out um, orders and plans and stuff to everyone who was in that cave to try to figure out a way for them to beat Mercury and also help Wong crew march on in. It, it was great for her to take charge, use her, her, um, use her skills. Um, uh, it definitely showed how valuable she was. Um, I love that she was able to still communicate with Bellamy and kind of relay what they've learned and kind of keep each other, um, in the know. Um, so I, Definitely liked Echo in this episode for sure. Also, her interactions with the rest of Space Crew was just awesome as well. So I'll leave it at that. Another favorite of mine was Raven and Shaw. Um, 
I mean, this whole season you kind of saw like there's something building between them, but to finally see it come to a head in this episode, I really like that. It was also in the cave when he's just looking at her and she's tinkering around trying to set up uh, an antenna connection. He's just amazed at her and she's like, "What?" And he's like, "Is there anything you can't fix?" And then like her reaction was, "Well, other than my leg, no." Um, so it was very interesting to see that he, she's able to still surprise him, and I love that. And I love that she made the first move, even though, like, he came and, like, she was giving him the silent treatment for a few days, it seemed, and he came up to her and confronted her about it, and instead of, like, arguing or kind of spouting off lies about why she's avoiding him, she just jumped right in and kissed him. So I really like these two. I I really want to see uh, how things continue for them. I really hope Shaw doesn't die because I want Raven to have her bit of happiness I want to see her happy again. Um, so there's that. Also, another small favorite I had was just the... Um, sorry. Um, another sm small favorite I had was between Bellamy and Monty. Um, especially when Monty is sharing his rations with Bellamy. And they're kind of talking about the future. And Bellamy brings up the fact that um, he kind of negotiated 80 acres for them in the valley. And how he kind of points out to Monty now you can try to grow something other than algae it was just a little fun little moment between them and I'm glad they had it hope it doesn't lead to any, like I hope it doesn't mean that something more serious is going to happen but I just hope I just like the idea that they're still planning um for something in the future so there's that uh, moving into top three peeve moments I would have to say that I'm a little disappointed that Clark told McCurry about the Allegis eye being hacked um I don't really understand why I mean, this, I was going to bring this up in random questions, but I don't understand why Clark even told Mercury about that hack in the first place. I mean, the guy monitoring it even said it took him 10 minutes just to find, um, what was it? Just to find the rewind button. So it's like, um, why did Clark offer that information up to her? She could have easily said that, well, I could get my mom back in healthy order to operate. She could have left it at that. So, um. I don't understand why she revealed that uh, advantage to her enemy. So there's that. And another thing I didn't like was the fact that uh, Abby ended up curing the Mercur curing religious prisoners and Mercury of their um, uh, their lung uh, issues. Um, kind of sucks because um, now. The Legis prisoners are now at full force, and they're awaiting one crew to arrive instead of being weak and having their lungs um, um, kind of debil debilitate them. Um, so that was a peep right there. But moving on to what moment will I remember most when I look back on this episode? The flashbacks to The Dark Year, for sure. The title itself is The Dark Year, so that's a huge giveaway right there. Uh, but moving on to random questions, uh, I did mention my first one, which is with Clark and Mercury and the Eagle and the Legis Eye. But my second one would have been: um, was the small square of food in the flashback? Was that all Wong Crew would eat at every meal as their rations? I mean, was that small cubes supposed to have a mix of everything that they're supposed to eat? Uh, vegetables, fruits, proteins, uh, vitamins, all that stuff. And it just so happened that the cube itself had the meat in it too so i'm wondering if it really was all that they ate because then on that big plate it's really really daunting the fact that it's such a difference you have a huge plate and it's not filled and you have a little ration instead so it's just a little something that really threw me and i'm wondering if that square was really all they were meant to have or is it because they started the cannibalism in the dark year it was what it's going to look like now for the next year so there's that um also, I had another one. Also, yeah, another question was that if the idea of cannibalism was going to be so um, controversial to the people in one crew, I'm wondering why they even told them that's what they were eating. Right? I mean, was it something that they wanted everybody to wear out of that? In order to survive, you're going to have to eat the dead fighters that have betrayed one crew. And and then have everybody be aware of the fact that they were taking part in cannibalism or instead why don't why couldn't they just have Kane, Abby, Kara, and Octavia and Indra in the know that this is what they would actually be eating but everyone else in Wan crew would have no idea they would just think that it was um 
uh, just regular protein or was they or were they think of the backlash they would get if that truth came out. So I'm wondering why exactly did they keep that cannibalism um, turn as a need to know or if they were just going to do a full disclosure type of thing. I'm wondering why they made that type of a choice or if that choice would have changed anything. Um, so there's that. Uh, now my next question originally was, will Octavia keep her word to Bellamy? And there's the timer about the piece um, he wanted her to do with uh, Allegis or with Dioza specifically. So there's that. Um, and another, or my last question would be, Dioza and Kane turning themselves into Mercury in the last moment of the episode. Is that real? Are they truly betraying one crew? Or is that a part of their ruse to get themselves inside enemy lines? Kind of like a Trojan horse. So there's that right there. So moving on to predictions, very quickly, based off the promo for 512, um, it shows a lot of clips of the war beginning inside Shallow Valley. Um, so there's that. The synopsis, though, for 512 reads, In part one of the season five finale, Octavia leads her people into war. While behind enemy lines, our heroes must overcome their differences to save one crew from extinction. Part one of two, that we're going to get a huge cliff for at the cliffhanger at the end of 512 you just know it um but i'm excited to see how exactly this goes we already know what deoza thinks how the war is going to end and one and i'm wondering if it's going to be true if they're going to maybe try to have less casualties than predicted or what i don't know but anyways moving on from that uh this past weekend did have san diego comic-con specifically uh july 21st 2018 is when eliza taylor aka clark and bob morley aka bellamy were both at comic-con to do interviews there wasn't a panel for the 100 but the two of them were doing um interviews about the final three episodes of season five and they did tease that the finale is emotional heartbreaking and they believe it's one of their best finales now on the one hand i'm a little disappointed that we didn't actually get a full panel for the 100 because i kind of wanted some spoilers about season six but then again on the other hand i do understand that you can't really have a panel dedicated to season six spoilers without giving away what is going to happen in the final three episodes of season five so at least we had some representation um, with eliza and bob there talking about um, the remainder of season five so um that's all that i'm going to be able to talk about for san diego comic-con for the 100 so i thought i'd just leave it in here but otherwise guys that's about it what you guys think of the episode what you guys like about it what do you think is going to happen next let me know in the comments down below love to hear your own thoughts theories and predictions about what you think is going to happen in the final two episodes of season five also don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel and check my other videos if you haven't done so already if you want check on my tumblr page the link for that is down below i read blog promos web clips quotes gifs synopses news all the good stuff all fun in one place go check that out i am behind fully aware of that um but hopefully i can binge a day and just update everything um so be on the lookout for that also wordpress account link for that is down below everything i post online is connected to my wordpress account uh, it's a little more organized but again work in progress i know i gotta update that um so it's on the list um but otherwise guys that's what it thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for your patience i hope you come back uh next time to see what they say about the uh, part one of the finale um until then this is mel wishing you a great day great week bye for now